that works out. If not, I'll get me a substitute, get Pritchard fly out there and, and sing for me. Well, and that choir, oh my, that choir. Thank you so much, choir, for singing tonight. You have got a really good choir, and the selections that the choir has been singing have been so good. And our pianist has done a good job, and our organist has done a good job, and uh, the children have done a good job. They've been so friendly. And uh, you've been so nice to me and so encouraging. And uh, visitors being here tonight, thank you for coming. And uh, Miss Ashley, you've done a good job. Yeah, she, she's pretty ticked, though, that you haven't got all of it yet, you know. And so as you go out, if you want some of those coloring books, we've got coloring books. We've got crayons that you can get as well for the coloring books. Um, we got some of God Did It and some of David and all these uh, different CDs out there. They're just any size donation. You can use a credit card or cash. We're so old fashioned, we take cash, yeah. And, um, and or checks. Just don't write a check to Ashley, whatever you do. <laughs> write it to the Bible <laughs> Truth Music or Byron Fox Evangelistic Association. It's been great getting to be here. Thank you, Pastor. And um, we've just had a wonderful time. I can't believe how fast this has gone. Um, I love this church. Now, don't let up. Stay with it. And this coming weekend, we have a magnificent opportunity. This um, trunk or treat thing that we're doing. And we've got our, our sign out there, our banner. But now we've got a personal be invited and use your social media and uh, all that. And I mean, let's just have this campus full of folk that we're reaching and um, exposing them and presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ to everything we do at our church. Everything. Everything we do. It's harnessed to two things. Number one, worshiping and glorifying God. Number two, the furtherance of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everything we do, everything we do. Now, even that pizza time over there was harnessed to it because it's trying to get you here so you can hear the gospel. <laughs> and uh, pizza works. It gets people here. There's a man in the uh, in U.S. Congress. His name is Bill. He's 60-some years old. When he's 15 years old, a, um, a blue Baptist bus would go through his, uh, his town. He's 15. And he had a little sister, two years old. Just the two of them, and mom and dad. Mom and dad were drunkards. And um, they came by. The bus captain came by on Saturday and said, Bill, we want you to come to Sunday school with us. He said, I'm not going to Sunday school. I'm never going to church. They said, well, Bill, we've got orange juice and we've got donuts. Guess who came? And yeah, Bill, Bill Johnson. His very first Sunday school class. His very first Sunday school class. Yeah, he had orange juice and he had donuts. He was starving to death. He stepped over his drunken parents to come to get on that bus. His very first Sunday school class, he received Christ as his Savior. And he's in the U.S. House of Representatives right now. And he stands tall for the Lord. By the way, Congratulations, America. We've got a Speaker of the House in here. Praise God. And he is a fine man. This past, um, this past May, this past May, I was there in Washington, D.C. doing a meeting and uh, with numbers of people and so forth. And uh, myself and Mike Johnson and a fellow named David Barton, we were leading a tour through uh, the Capitol building. And... Um, Mike Johnson, who was elected Speaker of the House today, we're, we're leading that tour through there and showing different things and David Barton telling history and, and um, uh, the representative telling things that go on there in Congress and so forth. And then someone said, uh, we got out in the rotunda, said, Brother Fox, would you lead us in how great thou art? And right out there with Mike Johnson, the new Speaker of the House and, and uh, uh, Tim Scott was there with us, that, uh, that uh, senator out of uh, South Carolina, and there's another congressman there, and then about seven or eighty of us. We began singing, Oh Lord my God, when I an awesome one. We sang, How Great Thou Art. I didn't know, but Fox News somehow had got, got somebody had a video of that thing. We were on Fox News for 13 seconds singing. <laughs> yeah. Somebody texted me and said, Hey, you're on Fox News. Leave me sing. Oh, you're off. <laughs> but that was with the Speaker of the House, the fellow who's the Speaker of the House today. He is a strong Christian man. And before I preach tonight, you know what I want us to do? I want us to pray for him. 
I am astounded that he was elected Speaker of the House. I'm telling you, he is a good man. He's brilliant, but he loves the Lord. And everybody knows that. And did you notice, if, if you watch the news or whatever, he led folk in prayer. Amen to that. Amen. If we're going to get back to God, it's going to be the way of prayer. Amen. Amen. So let's stop and pray for the new Speaker of the House, and then we've got to get in the Bible. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, we are so thankful that you're leading in America and you're giving us gifts. Now, Lord, you know I don't endorse people, but Lord, that's a good man there. He openly tells folk that he knows you and he loves you. And the world is even talking about what a strong Christian man he is. And we're happy about that. And we're happy he's leading in prayer. And we're astounded, Lord, that you would give us such a gift. I look at it, Lord, myself personally as a gift from you. Now, Lord, oh, Lord, he's going to need help. I pray that the others in Congress who know you and know you well, that they will stand by him. And then, Lord, he needs divine, divine wisdom. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. I'm sure he's asking. And here at Holly Hills Baptist, we've joined our hearts together and we're asking on his behalf a prayer of intercession. We're interceding on his behalf that you would help him and strengthen him and use him to please send a great awakening and a great revival to America. And Lord, right here in Virginia and right here in Powhatan, would you touch our place? Thank you, Lord, for all these folk who gather tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's look in the Bible. May we? Here we are in, <coughs> excuse me, in uh, Psalm 122 and verse 1. It's a little short verse. And so I'm going to ask you all to read it with me. And I'm going to ask you to use your preacher's voice, would you? I mean, put something into it. All right, give yourself a B12 shot. You ready? Here we go. Ready? Begin. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad. I was happy. I was cheerful. Oh, I was just so delighted when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I titled tonight's message, How to Be an Exceptional Church Attender. How to be an exceptional church leader. Some people are exceptional to things. Um, you know, there's a fellow who played golf, you know, named uh, the Golden Bear, Jack Nicholas. Oh, he was good at golf. There's a fellow who played basketball named Michael Jordan. Oh, he was good. He was exceptional. Those men were exceptional at their sports. Well, what would it take to be an exceptional church Attender. Now, I've got 11 points in this thing. We better get with it. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. I like that. <laughs> Number one. Now, this, this makes common sense. If we're going to be an exceptional church attender, number one, show up for every service. Now, that makes sense, doesn't it? If you're going to be an exceptional church attender, you're not just going to go twice a year. <laughs> or even once a month. No, you're going to show up Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. You're going to go to Sunday school. When there's a revival meeting, you're going to be in every service. When there's missions conference, you're going to be in every service. When there's trunk or treat, you're going to be there and do your part of the, the helping. Oh, yeah, you're just going to be at every service. Way too many Christians are just sort of hit and miss. They, they come a little bit. But you can't count on them being there at every single service. Now, the Bible says it this way, Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. When we come together, but we, we are considering each other and we're provoking each other to do what? Good works, love <coughs> and good works. And then the scripture goes on. St. Passage says this, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. Oh, some been forsaken. Not forsaken the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more 
as you see the day approaching the day of Christ's coming is approaching. The day of our death is approaching. The, the day of the Lord's soon return is, is approaching. Uh, look, these days are approaching. The judgment seat of Christ is approaching. The great white throne judgment is approaching as we see the day approaching. We don't need less church. No, we need more church. Amen. We're not going to cut the length of our services anymore. So, uh, I think they should be less than an hour. No, <laughs> that's just not going to happen. We just can't get <clears throat> get it in in, a, in one hour. It usually goes by our ten minutes or so. That's what the service been each night. And anybody who thinks that's just going too long, uh, you got problems. You know they, these services are not too long at all. And can we all agree that our culture is getting worse? Yes. Oh yeah, it's not getting better. It's getting worse. So as the culture in America and in Virginia is getting worse and worse, oh, we don't need less church. We need more church. More people need to be in church. America doesn't need less church. Virginia doesn't need not less church. We need more church. So I had been in an exceptional church attendant number one, show up for every service. And that means me and you. Number two, going to be exceptional at this thing. Number two, show up early yeah come early to the services you know if we got a 10 o'clock sunday school you are allowed to get here at 9 45 you can get here 9 30 our preacher gets here about eight o'clock come on come on let's get here early colossians 3 23 whatsoever you do do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Look, coming to God's house to worship God, to obey God, to hear from God, surely we ought to give that our best effort. I mean our very best. And I think getting here a little bit early, it always helps. You know, we talked the other day, the kids make it challenging. You, you lay out the clothes the night before. You go in there and wake your boy up. He's six years old. You go in there and say, hey, hey, Herman. <laughs> hey, <laughs> whatever you want. Henry, whoever you are. Hey, 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 boy. Time to get up. We're going to church. And little boy said, pizza. <laughs> the night before. He stayed up too late. And little boy says, oh, you mean I've got to go to church? And a good daddy says, no, 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 no. You don't got to. Hey, boy, you get to. Yeah. The boy gets to go to church. And so do we. We get to go to church. And, um, yeah, it, it makes it a little... Uh, Challenging having several children to get ready and all that. I understand that. But God designed us to rise to challenges and get your clothes out of that'll help you and get everything ready. Look, the key to seeing all this is you understand that going to church, attending church, assembling together is a spiritual matter. It's not just a schedule matter, it's a spiritual matter. And when you get here early, well, you're not frazzled, you're not uh, stressed. You're not cluttered. Now look, if you're late, we'll still take you. Amen. Some people are late for everything. You know? I mean, just late for everything. Everything. Some people, they say, he's going to be late to his own funeral. He's late. He's always late. He's always late. And I know how to fix always being late. I know how to fix it. Uh, would y'all let me tell you how to fix it? I'm going to. Okay. Uh, here's how you fix. If you're always 10 minutes late, if you always are, here's how to fix it. Leave home 10 minutes earlier. You know, so church starts at 10. Sunday school starts at 10. Well, leaving home at 10 is not on time. <laughs> and all of us are going to have times that will be a little bit late and all that stuff. That's why, that's why you build in a little extra time for traffic, flat tire, all that kind of stuff. Because all that does happen. But if you're going to be exceptional, Hey, let me ask you a question. Would you like to be exceptional in the church attendance? Yes. I'd like to be able to do that. Well, number one, show up every service. Number two, show up early. Number three, show up at church ready to receive. We want to receive from the Lord. <coughs> Psalm 19 says it this way. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, 
enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter are they than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by these words, moreover by them is thy servant warned. And in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O amen. Show up ready to receive. I mean, come eager. Ready to rejoice with your church family and ready to rejoice with the Lord and ready to rejoice and agree uh, with the word of God as it's preached and expect to have a good time with God's people. The happiest place on this earth ought to be church. The friendliest place on this earth ought to be church. You visitors, don't you feel welcome? When I come here, I feel so welcome. This church is so encouraging. And it comes from the pastor all the way down to everybody in the pew. It just, I enjoy coming to church. Don't y'all? Amen. Amen to that. And show, show up ready to receive. Don't just listen to the preaching of the word of God. No, no. Tune in and agree with the Lord on it. Second Peter 3.18. Grow in grace. You see, hey, hey, every one of us, every one of us, are we taking our next step forward with Christ? Every one of us. All of us still need to grow. All of us. Whoever is the most mature Christian in here needs to take that next step. So I've been saved for, for 52 years. <coughs> Once you've been saved that long, if you're not careful, you'll think, yeah, I've arrived. I have not arrived. No, I need to take my next, next step forward with the Lord. And wherever you are in your walk with Christ, you need to take your next step. And probably you know what your next step is. Take it. For some, it might be baptism, uh, church membership, uh, singing in the choir. Uh, there's two or three empty seats up here. Yeah, and by the way, I meant to say this a while ago. I like hearing those men sing, but boy, those, those ladies sing like angels, do they not? When they sing that verse all by themselves, I like it. Of course, it's pretty impressive those guys sing out like they did too. Oh, yeah. You get in the choir. Whatever, whatever your next step is, take your next step with the Lord. Amen. Number four. Number four. We're going to be exceptional. Number four. Show up ready to give. Yeah, show up ready to give. The Bible says it this way. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 2. Upon the first day of the week. Now, what's the first day of the week? Okay. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. So our tithes, our offerings uh, on Sunday morning, uh, we ought to come ready to give as God's prospered us. Now, let me ask you a question. Y'all ready for my question? Maybe. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Good, good, good. Uh, do you think God needs American currency? Uh, no. If you think God needs our money, you don't understand God at all. We know American currency is not worth as much as it used to be. It's going down, is it not? I mean, you have to have a lot of money just to fill up with gas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and buying a house, <laughs> that's almost unattainable these days. You have to have a lot of money to make a down payment on our house these days. Yeah, I get all that. God's not broke. He doesn't need me to give this little American currency. <clears throat> he doesn't need it. He wants me to trust him. And he wants me to obey him. Do your giving while you're living so you're knowing where it's going. Yeah, yeah, it's a joy to get to give. Now, let's see. <clears throat> Of all those things that you have, let's say you have a car, you have a bed, you got a little bit of furniture, you got some food at your house. Some of you have houses, some of you have apartments and lots of different places. You have stuff. Now, let, let me see. How much of all that stuff does uh, does God own? 
all of it. We're just stewards for a little while. While we're on this earth, for just a little while. Life's not very long. And just for a little while, life's a vapor. And just for a little while, I was up in uh, Ohio. And uh, the pastor of that church, oh, some time back, a long time back, he had said, now, Brother Fox, anytime you want to use our building for anything, you can do it. Well, I was <clears throat> up in Ohio, and I was preaching through Thursday, and then I was starting something else on Saturday, and I could not get home on Friday. There's no way I could get back to my wife and go back to work. So I called that pastor. I said, Preacher, remember that time you told me I could use your building for anything? He goes, yeah, what do you want to do? I said, I've got a Friday coming up in a few months that um, if you'd let me, I'd like to have a, I don't know, a youth rally at your place. And let's get all the young people together that we can. And I said, I'll feed them. I'll play games with them. And then I'll preach to them. And he said, well, Brother Fox, we, we want to do that. Our church wants to be in on that. And we'll try to get some young people out of the community. And he said, by the way, we'll feed them. Thank the Lord. <laughs> These young people can eat. You know? I said, well, thank you, preacher. Well, I got in town. He said, we're going to get your hotel room, too. So <clears throat> I got in town. When I got in town, I don't know, about 3 o'clock or so, I was going to go over to the church and uh, get there early and get things going. I got to the hotel, and it was pouring down the rain. Lightning. I mean, it was a, they, they call them gully washers. I'm, woo! It was bad. I flopped down on the bed. I said, oh, Lord, I'm tired. And I said, Lord, I don't know if any young people are going to come tonight. It's, it's so bad. I said, Lord, can I take a little nap? I took about a 10-minute nap, woke up. I said, Lord, I'm going over that church. I'm going to do all I can. I said, Lord, if 20 come tonight, I'm going to do my dead level best. As I went on to church, I said, it was so bad, I could barely see as I'm driving. I said, Lord, if 12 come. I said, you had Jesus come to work with 12 disciples. I said, if 12 come, I'll do my dead level best. I went over there, and I'm getting things ready, all that. And a few little young people started showing up. And you know, we're going to have a good time. You know, I got some songs I'm going to sing with them. Gonna have, and something changed. Oh, something big changed. There's a ball game in town going on. And the storms were so bad that they had to, well, they just canceled the games. And they decided to bring all them kids over here to the youth rally and let them eat. And, uh, oh, yeah. And where I, I went from having maybe 10 or 12, I had over 100 show up. I said, "Woo! I like this. Order some more pizza. Yeah. Oh, I, I played games. I preached my heart out. Young people started coming down the aisle to receive Christ. A, a coach came down. The pastor himself dealt with the coach. And the coach got saved. And um, we was eating all that. And the coach came over and said, Preacher, said, I was raised in church, but I never got saved. He said, I got saved tonight. Preacher, what's this thing about baptism? Am I supposed to get baptized? The preacher said, yes. The coach said, would you baptize me Sunday? This man making plans to be there Sunday. Well, so, you know, he's leaving. And he came back and he said, Preacher, I've heard about tithing. He said, I've never tithed in my life. It's Friday night. Gully washer's still going on. Coach says, could I write my first tithe check tonight? Wrote a $3,000 tithe check that first. Pays to have, pays to have these, uh, these youth rallies on Friday nights. <laughs> I'm glad he started tithing. God doesn't need the money. No, sir. No, 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 no. God doesn't need me or you. There's a church in North Carolina that they got embezzled by somebody and, and they had a Christian school and they thought they, they oh, suddenly the, the preacher called me and said, I've, I've, I've been so foolish and our church has been embezzled and we have nothing. And I just had two Sundays in a row suddenly, just totally out of the blue cancel. I said, I'm coming down there with you, preacher. I'm standing with you. He said, well, preacher. I said, no, 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 no. I said, I'll lead some singing for you. I'll say a bunch of amens for you. I'll play the piano for you. I'll do lots of things. I said, but they need to hear their pastor preach. And so I think I preached once or twice on those Sunday nights, but he, he preached Sunday morning. I was down there with him. And you know, it's easy for the evangelists to have a lot of faith. I wasn't the one embezzled. The church and the pastor. And he felt so silly that it happened uh, while he was pastor. 
Here we are, it's broken. He's gone on Sunday morning, going up to tell his crowd, dear Lord. I said, preacher, I said, this is just a little hiccup. It's going to be fine. See, it's easy for the evangelist to have a lot of faith, you know. I get to get in my car and drive on. As I was saying stuff like that to him, right there early on a Sunday morning, a car came in, and a Hispanic man came, walked up and said to me, he said, Pastor, I said, well, I'm not the pastor. I said, let me take you to the pastor. And we went in there, and this fellow uh, said, Pastor, I was driving by, and God says, give him money. He gave $20,000, a check for $20,000, and it cleared the bank, okay? <laughs> he got back in his car and drove on. Never saw him again. See, God can do things like that. And the church took up a $28,000 offering that morning. Once they found out, they said, well, we're going to do some giving. And uh, suddenly they had about $45,000, $48,000 in the bank when they thought it was broke with that Christian school and with all the bills that were piling in. Oh, hallelujah. God does not need my little bit of money. If you want to be exceptional at church attendance, well, oh, show up ready to give. Be intentional with your giving. Number five, whoo, we got to move on. Don't look at the clock. I know what you did. Look at the clock. Take a little slip over there and look at that phone. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's only on point five and he's got 11. Get with it, man. All right, number five. Show up. Listen to this one, Pastor. Number five, being exceptional. Show up ready to sing. Oh, yeah. Come in here ready to sing. When we have these congregational songs, if you want to be exceptional, if you want to be a good church attender, show up ready to sing, whether you've got a good voice or not. Work on it. I mean, try to get the right notes. <laughs> Come in at the right time. I mean, try all that stuff. But whether you, you have a, carrying a tune is not the requirement. No, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord is what the Bible says. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Yes, once you get born again, God puts a new song in your heart. When your heart is full of Christ, you want to sing. The greatest music in all the world is congregational singing. <laughs> you get everybody singing Amazing Grace together, or even this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Whatever the song is, it's wonderful to hear all of God's people singing together. Psalm 149, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. So number five, want to be exceptional at, at church attendance? Well, show up ready to sing. Number six, show up willing to serve. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh yeah, uh, show up willing to serve. Galatians 5.13 Brethren, it's talking to Christians. Now if you're listening, say amen. amen. Brethren, Christian folk, brethren, ye have been called in liberty. Only use not this liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. All these opportunities to be a blessing to each other, to be a help to each other through the service the folk who have been working with our children every single night and all of these services, those who work with the children, what a blessing that is. Those who serve in the nursery, those who work as ushers, those who do sing in the choir, those who do play the instruments, those who do count the offering, uh, those who volunteer with all sorts of duties, those who are going to help us this, <coughs> this Sunday night with our trunk or treat, and many hands make light work. We're going to need a lot of people involved. Amen. Amen. I'd like to have the biggest crowd we've ever had. And I'd like to see that somebody receive Christ this coming Sunday night. That'd be great, would it not? And so um, bus ministries and all kind of ministries and, and working with the teenagers and uh, working the, the, the sound and being a greeter. Walmart, they've got those greeters. You know, people come in, they're like, hey, nice to see you. Buy some stuff. That's what you're doing tonight, right, Miss Anderson? Right. Hey, we're about to leave, but now stop by. Get some coloring books, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. we got greeters and just happy people all over this campus. And you know, really, 
being friendly makes a huge difference. I've heard people say at other churches, I've heard it said, you know, I went to that church and not a single person spoke to me. I've heard that said. May it never be said of Holly Hills Baptist Church Amen. that all of us, we go a little out of our comfort zone because in this room we've got extroverts and we have some that are introverts. I know that. And so you introverts, push yourself a little bit and, 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 and say, sometimes, look, sometimes just doing this. A smile. You know, now brush your teeth, but smile. Yeah, a smile. A smile and a and a, a smile back is a is a, a sign and a counter sign between friendly people. Oh yeah, and so uh, uh, let's let's show up ready to serve one another. We always need more servers. We always need more servants. The one prayer request that Jesus gave: pray for laborers. That's his prayer request. Number seven. All right, number seven. You're going to be exceptional at church attendance. And we right here at Holly Hills, we want to be exceptional at this church attendance things. But number seven, show up with an invitation pending. Show up with an invitation pending. Um, many of you have told me, even tonight some of you told me, about people that you invited to be here. Yeah, and, and you, 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 had, you had some invitations pending. You, you had invited folk, and, and your service time was about to come, and, and you're looking out there on that parking lot, where's my friend? Where's my family member? Where's my coworker that I, and they said they are going to come. Where, where are they? And <coughs> you come with some invitations pending. I gave some invitations this week, trying to get some folk here. All of us should always be trying to get some more folk to be here at church with us. Amen. Luke 14, 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out in the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Well, it's kind of comfortably filled. Well, then we're just going to have to keep choir up here is all I know. Yeah. And have to keep, man, we just have to stay on the, because there won't be any room out here for you to sit. Yeah? I have been in services that we had to use the piano bench. We we had to go get every chair that was in the, but I like it when it's packed completely out. People, and children sitting all around up on the platform. I've seen all that. Oh, I want the house to be filled for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Number eight. Goes right along with number seven. Number eight, show up with your guest. Just go by and pick them up in the car and bring them. <laughs> uh, John 1 and verse 42 talking about Andrew. Andrew says, and he brought him to Jesus. Andrew went and got his brother. <coughs> come here, Peter. Come here. You're my brother. I got I to gotta bring you to somebody. Come on. Come with me. I'm going to bring you to Jesus. Andrew went and got his brother, Peter, and brought him to Jesus. I was out uh, door knocking in my Church's town, Smithfield, Virginia. I'm out knocking doors, and I told you uh, today at lunchtime, preacher, about that uh, that policeman that I spoke to. Well, a few doors down from that policeman, I knocked on a door. A young man, about 20 years old, I said, "Hey, my name is Byron Fox." I said, "I am trying to get somebody to come to church with me tonight." And this young man said, uh, "Well, I'm spiritual." I said, "Wow." I said, what does that mean? Well, he didn't exactly know what that meant. I think maybe he heard somebody say it and he thought he'd say it. And when I said, well, what does that mean? He didn't know what it really meant, you know? I said, oh, I'll tell you what. I said, why don't you come to church with me tonight? And uh, I said, we're going to have the Bible preached and we're going to read the Bible together. We're going to probably sing some songs to the Lord. And I said, why don't you come with me tonight? He said, okay, I'll come. I said, wait a minute. Are you serious? He goes, yeah, I'll come. I said, now, his boy's name is John. I said, now, Josh, now let me tell you, about 6.30, service starts at 7. I said, about 6.30, there's that car down there. I'm going to bring it right here to your, I'm going, I'm going through every step of it. You know what I'm saying? I said, I'm going to pull the car right here. I'm going to walk up on his door, and I'm going to say, hey, and, and then you come out, and, and you get in the car, and I get, and I'll drive you to church. He goes, okay. I said, you're not playing with me, are you? I said, and you know what? He came to church with me. 
And the next Sunday he came back. He brought his grandmama. Yeah, God's working in his heart. Got to get up here, don't we? In Kentucky, um, church I worked with many, many, many times, served with him many times. And there's a fellow in town named Perry. And Perry was 60-something years old at this point. And Perry had never gotten saved. And finally, by the grace of God, Perry received Christ as his Savior. Now, in that town, everybody in that little town, I don't know, 10 or 15,000 people in that little town, <clears throat> eastern Kentucky, everybody knew him. Why? Because he'd been the little league coach. And, I mean, he's just involved in his community. And so I was going back over there. And uh, Perry told me, and we was having a grand opening of the every church building. And I was there to preach the grand opening. So I got in town on Saturday, and I'm talking to Perry. And uh, Perry's going to get baptized the next day on Sunday. And Perry said, uh, Brother Fox said, uh, I've got 31 of my friends going to come. Watch me get baptized. I said, no way. He said, yeah, 31. He said, my family doctor's going to come see me get saved. He's the guy I bought a car from. He's going to come see me get you know, I thought, oh no. Perry is going to be sorely disappointed. Because how many of you have ever had 31 promises and nobody came? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I said, well, Perry, I said, it's pretty hard to get a family doctor to come. I said, that guy you bought a car from, <clears throat> a, guy, a guy named Robert that bought a car from, I said, pretty hard to get fellows like that to come. He said, you think they're not coming? I said, I don't know. It's pretty hard to get them. He said, I'm going to go call all of them then. I'm going to make sure they're coming. <laughs> I've never seen it before in my life. He went 31 for 31 preaching. His family doctor was sitting out here. They all came. See him get baptized. I think about five of them received Christ that day. Amen, Amen to that. Oh yes. Don't don't just invite them, bring them. And 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 Follow up on them and make some phone calls. Say, now, doctor, I came to see you a lot of times when I was sick. I, I want you to come see me get baptized. <laughs> he put some pressure on. I know him. <laughs> and he got them there. Number nine. Number nine. Eleven ways that we can be exceptional church attenders. Number nine. Show up with your Bible. Bring your Bible to church. Amen. Amen. Second Peter 1 21. The prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but by but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And so every service, have you noticed? Every single service preacher preaches from the Bible. It's never Reader's Digest. It's never Hipparchies or any other of those metaphysicians. Spinoza. Ever read Spinoza? Silly. Descartes, silly. Descartes wasn't even sure if he's alive. If you're not sure you're alive, I'm not even going to read any more of you, man. <laughs> All these metaphysicians, no, 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 no. I need the word of God. Amen. Amen to that. And we're going to always, always preach from the word of God and mark some passages in your Bible and study the word of God. Amen to all that. Number 10, show up praying. Come with a prayer in your heart. Pray for God's power to be upon the, the choir. We don't want to sing. We don't want the choir to sing just in human energy alone. No, we need the hand of God on our choir. Amen. Amen. Our Sunday school teacher needs the hand of God on our Sunday school teacher. The preacher needs the hand of God. Without God's power, it's meaningless. Amen. Oh, we've got to have the Lord. So why are you so declarative about that, Brother Fox? John 15, 5. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. And then Jesus said, for without me, ye can do nothing. We must have the Lord. And so we come praying. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. Well, Brother Fox, I can't do that. Why not? Well, Brother Fox, if I prayed without ceasing, I'd have to be a Christian. Amen to that. Prayers for the Christian. Praying always, the scriptures say. So show up praying. And then number 11. Show up with a desire for God to reveal himself more fully to you. Show up with a desire for God to reveal himself more fully to you. My pastor as a boy, Ken Dudley, on Wednesday nights, he had preached through a book of the Bible. 
And he would teach us memory verses. Our whole church. And I remember us learning this. Philippians 3.10. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings. Being made conformable unto his death. Church. When we assemble together. It is a unique time. To have a connection with God. And when we come, we should be more enthralled with him than ever. When we come, we ought to be more thankful for his grace than ever. We ought to be more humbled by his holiness. There ought to be conviction over sin. Some people think that conviction is not a good thing. <coughs> conviction from God Almighty is a great thing. It shows that God loves us. It shows he cares. And sometimes we get in these services and we get the Bible out and our sin is exposed in our own lives and we think, oh, Lord. Yes, we need to agree with God. Now let me tell you something I do not believe in. Are you still listening? Amen. I'm going to tell you something I do not believe in. I do not believe in lost church membership. What do you mean, Brother Fox? I don't believe lost people need to be members of the church. Amen. Now, lost people can come to the church at all times. Yeah, these, these public services, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, lost folk, I mean, you know, they can't disrupt the service. We've had a few times uh, through uh, all of my services in the last 30 years of events. I've had a few times that I've had to have people taken out of the service. We've had to have some people arrested sometimes. We had a few disorderly things, but, but as long as you don't disrupt the service, everybody is welcome. But no, we don't believe in lost church membership. We don't believe lost people ought to be members of the church. I was doing a meeting in Norfolk, Virginia, and that church did not have a choir. And I asked the pastor, I said, could I start a choir Sunday afternoon? He said, I said just for the revival meeting. He said, sure. So I don't know. I got up there and I said, now anybody who wants to come to this choir, anybody who wants to come can come. And so we had people show up, about 20 people or so, showed up and I taught them a brand new song and uh, taught them two or three, but I had one ready for that night for us to sing. And a fella, a, a Navy boy, who had come for the very first time that morning, he came to choir practice. Yeah. And so I taught that new song to him and all that. And that Sunday evening service, whoo, it was good. Oh, it was good. It's a great service. And I said to the pastor at the end of the service, I said, Preacher, could we have just a few minutes for people to give testimony? It's been such a good service. Anytime there's real revival, there's real testimonies. And uh, I said, Preacher, could we have some testimonies? The preacher said, yeah. I said, all right, you get like 30 seconds to 60 seconds. Don't tell us your life story. Tell us something you thank God for, something you want to testify about today. And some people began getting up. Well, that fella who had come and joined the choir, came to that choir practice, it was a first-time visitor. He got up and he started talking about when he was a boy and how God had spared his life when he was very bad sick. And I said to him, I said, that's wonderful. I said, tell us about when you got saved. He said, well, Brother Fox, um, I'm working on that. I said, oh, you're working on that. Now, I'm up here and he's over on this side. I said, oh, you're working on that. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I, I, I'm working to make my way to the Lord and, and get saved. I said, oh. I said, uh, let me explain salvation to you. And there in front of everybody during the testimony time, I talked about how a man gets saved. And I can't remember exactly his name. I just called him Hank. That was not his name. It started with a G, whatever it was. Uh, I said, Hank, um, you know, I just told you how to get saved. Hank, would you like to get saved right here, right now? He goes, yes, I would. And right there in the testimony meeting, as he had been up trying to testify, say something good about the Lord, right there he received Christ as a Savior. Amen, Amen to that. Look, hey, you can sing in the choir as far as just being a guest on a special uh, effort like that. But being a member of the church, you need to be born again. You need to have received Christ as your Savior. And you ought to be a member of a local church. Everybody ought to be a member of a local church. It helps you stay accountable. It helps you grow in grace. Everybody stand and look this way. Everybody stand and look this way. Everybody needs a pastor. 
Everybody ought to have a Sunday school teacher. You ought to either be a Sunday school teacher or you ought to have a Sunday school teacher. Would you agree with that? Oh, amen to that. You ought to be in service Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. All the special services. If you really want to please the Lord, he said, forsake not the assembly. And see, God doesn't give suggestions. God gives orders. He gives commands. Can you imagine a little Navy boy saying to the Admiral, no, sir, I'm not doing that. No, no. When the Admiral gives a command, a little Navy boy is supposed to carry it out. Well, how much more should we be carrying out God's command? Would you bow your heads? Oh, how many of you know for sure you are saved? Would you slip a hand up and say, Brother Fox, I know I'm saved. God bless you. God bless you. You may put your hands down. Is there somebody in this room tonight who'd say, Brother Fox, I don't know that I'm saved. I'm like that fellow you talked about, Hank. I've been working on it, but I'm not saved. Is there anyone here like that tonight? That's just me and Jesus looking right now. Is there anybody like that? Just slip a hand up and let me see it. Say, Brother Fox, I'm not saved. But Brother Fox, would you pray for me that I will get saved? Anybody like that would slip a hand up right now and get my attention? Anybody? Front to the back, side to side? Anybody? All right, let me ask everybody in the room a question. How are you doing with your church attendance? Would you um, be subpar? Just kind of subpar. Just not, not really that great at it. You're not even average. You're, you're below average. Oh, then let's do something about it. Let's make some commitments right here, right now to be faithful in our attendance, faithful in our activity, faithful in our attitudes, faithful in our aspirations. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Oh, let's make some commitments. And men, we're the one who ought to be leading our family for all this church attendance. Praise God for ladies. Praise God for ladies who make deep resolutions. But if there's a husband that husband ought to be leading the way on this thing of church attendance. We're going to have a hymn play in just a second. Let me pray. Oh, Lord, please touch this invitation. I pray in Jesus' name. Little music's playing.